What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Pam and today I have the second installment of the 2021 garden vlog series. And today I'm just going to catch you up on what I have been doing. It's been a few weeks, uh, not ideal, but that seasonal depression. <laughs> <laughs> that's seasonal depression but that's okay we're feeling good today so i'm going to take you guys through all the seedlings that are coming up right now what i've got planted what i've been planting next and i'm also going to show you how to make some paper pots if you don't have any seedling pots and once again, we have a sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare and I will tell you more about that in a little while. So now I am repotting my seed dahlias and these guys have just gotten their first, maybe starting to make their second set of true leaves. And when I say true leaves, I just mean, see those leaves that, you know, they have like the little ridges on the edge. They look like adult leaves, except very tiny. The first two leaves that you see when a seed sprouts are called the cotyledon leaves. And those are not true leaves. Um, they are, they often won't even look like the true leaf. And those are just kind of the ones that the seed comes equipped with to get that seedling its first little drink of sunlight um, so that it can have the energy to make those true leaves. So. What I'm doing is just splitting these in half. I usually put two seeds per cell when I'm growing most of everything and either I will clip off the smaller seedling or I will split them like this depending on how many plants I want and how much effort it's worth. <laughs> so those are the last of my dahlia seeds so I did want to save as many as possible. Here's my water obsessed cat that um, doesn't learn no matter how many times I spray him in the face. Uh, I do dry it though. Don't worry. I'm not too mean. Look at him. Look at him. Not a thought in that head, bless his heart. So I'm pre-moistening my soil mix because you don't want to water after you've, you know, put things in it will move stuff around. And it's actually okay to do when you're up potting, but I've just gotten in the habit of pre-moistening my soil mix always because it's just a good way to make sure that it's nice and evenly moist, um, starts you off good. And when you're planting actual seeds, if you were to then pour water over the dry seedling mix, you would shift the seeds you just planted around. So just a good habit with houseplants, with gardening, with everything, just pre-moisten your soil mix before you get going. It's, it saves you some time. And a lot of times I'll let it soak for like good 10, 15 minutes because I use a lot of cocoa coir and I find that it takes a while to uptake the moisture. You know, and I, I do not do anything in this room without a cat's assistance, so Throughout my garden vlogs, you will see how helpful both of them really are. Um, Duncan, especially if he hears even a drop of water comes running in the room. So right here, these are my, let's see, what is that? My licorice mint. Yes. Okay. This is, I filmed this weeks ago. <laughs> so this is my licorice mint and I started two pots of this and they filled in really quickly. So what I've done is just pulled the clumps apart very gently, which I thought I filmed, but I guess I didn't. Uh, I just pulled them apart very gently and I'm potting them in littler clumps into their own pot. And those pots have already flushed out, which you will see toward the end of the video when I give you a little update. So here are the newspaper pots that I have been making out of my uh, Fedco seed catalogs. And I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, I didn't do it last year because I thought it would be a lot of work. See, I told you about the cat helpers. There's always a cat helper involved. So I'm using those. Um, I think these are the, I was getting ready to plant my strawberries at this time and Jack was just really interested. So strawberry seeds are really, really tiny. So this was kind of a delicate operation and I was trying to make sure that I got, you know, about three seeds per paper pot and um, one of the packages actually came pelleted and I kind of hate pelleted seeds. I may be alone on this, but I don't really have a lot of luck with them uh, and I would rather just have a tiny seed, you know? You can trust me with a tiny seed. I'm not a child. I can handle it. So anyway, these are the ones that have not sprouted yet, by the way. The other ones that were not pelleted have already sprouted. So I'll just continue my prejudice against pelleted seeds. And this, I, I included this because um, people often will tell me to put aluminum foil on my pots to keep the cat out. And uh, yeah, he just bites it and spits little pieces out. So now I can't have aluminum foil anywhere near him. And if you were wondering how to make the paper pots, I'm gonna show you right now. 
So that is a Fedco seed catalog and I just ripped out a single page. And you can do this with newspaper too and make even bigger pots. So you're just gonna fold it into thirds like that and make sure all your creases are nice and sharp because that'll help keep the pot together. Then you're gonna open up this open end right here and you're gonna insert tab A into slot B basically and just try to wiggle it as evenly and snugly as possible. Sometimes this can be a little fussy, but it's not too bad, especially if you were careful on your initial fold. Let me see, I'm just, I, I messed with that much longer than I'm showing you. So now I'm gonna use a butane can because that's what I have, um, but they actually make little wooden pot makers for this, but um, I can't justify buying a piece of wood for this one. I can just use this butane can, works perfect. So you're just going to, once you've got it tightened on there, you're gonna slip it down a little bit and now you're going to fold and make the bottom of the pot. So I just go around and just press down. It will sort of naturally guide you as to where to fold these little tabbies down. So that's what it will look like when you're done. And then you're just gonna slip it up a little bit off of the can and then you're going to pinch around the bottom and this was the trick that I didn't see on any of the directions I found that I couldn't get these things to stay together until I figured out to do this so that's my helpful tip for you if you pinch around the bottom your pot's not just going to fall apart for a little while I was putting a piece of tape on them because I couldn't figure out how people were doing this so there you go little paper pot and it's you know, free. I made it out of a seed catalog and it's been working really great. I thought they'd just fall apart, but so far so good. And I've been using them for about three weeks now. So give it a shot. So while I have you guys in a learning mindset, I want to talk to you really quickly about today's sponsor. Today's sponsor, once again, is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creative people like you and I. So if you are looking to get inspired, to enhance some skills you already have, or to gain some new ones, I can tell you from experience that Skillshare is a great learning resource. This month I have been teaching myself how to podcast, and of course the first place that I went was Skillshare, and sure enough they had tons of classes on the subject, including ones that used the software that I was using, which is Audacity. I ended up taking Amelia Gardner's class. It's called Recording Your First Podcast with Audacity. This class was perfect. It was only 17 minutes long. It covered everything I needed to know. And as soon as I was done with the class, I was able to record and export and upload my very first podcast. Skillshare is a fun, relaxed learning environment and you won't have any advertisements to interrupt your learning experience. And it is totally affordable at around $10 a month for their premium membership. There are new classes launching all the time and if you want to check it out before you commit you can click the link down below in my description box and the first 1000 people to use that link will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. Thank you Skillshare so much for sponsoring this frequently demonetized for reasons I do not understand channel. I appreciate you and let's get back to the video. All right, friends, so here is the grow room as it stands right now. Kind of got everything cluttered together. I'm starting to run out of room uh, a little earlier than I was hoping uh, with these guys, but that's what I get for always starting seeds too damn early. But, uh, you know, I like to have spring blooms. I just do. It worked really good last year after everyone told me not to start things early, so... Okay, so we are going to take you through this tray right here first. First up, we have some white sage right here. I have a few pots of this kicking around. Um, this seed was um, sourced from a farm that grows their own for seed, um, and I will put uh, the seed manufacturer. I got these from right here because I'm spacing on which one it was right now, uh, but I made sure that it was a sustainably sourced um, packet of seeds, and these are white sage is traditionally used for smudging, especially um, particularly I think exclusively by um, American indigenous peoples. So they definitely do not appreciate this being rendered endangered, um, particularly by people that, you know, don't use it for the purposes that they use it for. So that said, I plan to donate a lot of this to the local tribe through my uh, son's father, who is a member of it. So, okay, so then here we have some alyssum, and this is the, uh, let's see, what is this? Easter bonnet peach, and this um, this was a really pretty alyssum, so I'm hoping that that comes up okay. 
I have a flamingo flower celosia row right here. And hopefully you can see them. They're really cute. They're just little red sprouts. This is another important herb in um, Eastern religions, in Indian culture. And I also have Krishna Tulsi over here. I'm a huge Tulsi fan. If you've never had it, it's just a very unique flavor. It makes a really good tea and it is considered an adaptogen, which means that it generally moves you toward health um, if you eat it or take it. And right here, I have a row of toothache plant. These are really cool. You can actually chew on this plant and it will numb your mouth, which is where the name came from, obviously. And then this little row back here, these are all um, lettuces and kale, I think. Yes, I believe these are kale over here and lettuces. So this is just my first little crop. And I'm planning to put these out in either the hoop house I'm gonna build or um, a low tunnel, you know, when it's time. I believe all the lettuces are romaine because, um, or they're two different kinds of romaine, I believe, because those are the most cold hardy of the lettuce. Okay, so when we move up over here, this is my strawberry tray, and I have Alexandria as well as the Regina, and these are both those, you know, those little um, tiny native strawberries. So I'm hoping to be able to plant a lot of strawberries this year. I always buy the stupid plants and they never take, and I just, I give up. So I'm gonna try it from seed. And this tray has all onions in it. I believe these are my big bulbing onions. Yes, I have red burgundy and walla walla. Uh, and I have a couple rows of spinach in here. And then a few little Chinese cabbage right over here. Looks like this one has keeled over a bit right there. I have no luck with cabbage. So um, brassicas in general are a bit challenging for me. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this year. I'm gonna do some direct sowing too and see if that helps. So right here on the edge, I have honeybee violas, which are super cute. That's a fruition seeds variety. And then we've got three rows of coleus here. I have, let's see, we've got chocolate mint, black dragon, and mighty mosaic. Those are the mighty mosaics. They're really cool looking. Sorry, my camera doesn't focus. I need a new lens. I'm not a big fan of this one. Okay, so then here we have some way overgrown, way neglected daisy seeds. These grew way faster than I expected them to, so I don't even know if I will keep them, but I'm gonna try and split them a little later today, and we'll see how that goes. That is another row of them there as well. These are African and painted daisies. This row right here has actually got nothing in it. That little soil one right there. And then I've got three rows of just regular Johnny jump ups and they're not really coming up. Um, these are probably better for direct seeding anyway, but they were just the only other flower that it made sense to plant at the time, so I did. And then I've got some brush strokes and antique pansies over there and those are doing great. Those are definitely some flowers you want to start early on. All right, and then we'll come down here to this last shelf. So these are desperately in need of being split up right here. These are my other Tulsi plants. Got one there and one there. And then the rest of these little pots, like this is some peppermint right here. Baby peppermint is very cute. So there's more peppermint. There's some um, regular sage back here. Uh, just your standard, you know, uh, hardware store packet of seeds of sage right there. And then way back there, we have some cilantro. And cilantro, it's best to direct plant it, but um, with it being so early on in the season, sometimes I just grow like a little indoor pot of it just to get my fix until it's time to direct sow outside. The reason you wanna direct sow it over transplanting is because it will bolt a lot faster if you transplant it. And that's definitely something I had to learn the hard way. I think the first time I heard someone explain that, it was probably Petra from Fruition Seeds. And I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. I've also got oregano and marjoram in there. 
and this is piccolino basil which is like this petite little basil plant i got that from a friend and then in here are some not sprouted lysianthus no idea if those will come up because those seed packets were a joke some more precious white sage right there and then back here let me just pull this out for you guys so these first two rows here are bunching onions these are habanada peppers and i planted these very early as well as the buena mulata because i heard that they took a very long time to get going these in particular like even more time than your standard peppers which already take a bit of time getting a fungus net right in my face oh my god so you can see the the peppers are just starting to put out their first true leaves so pretty the little cotyledons are just like jet black so cool i just started a couple of these just so that i would have hopefully an early harvest but the rest of my peppers are going to wait a few more weeks so trying to be good this year about starting those so these will be kind of tough to see let's see yeah, you can just kind of see them. So here are the begonias that I'm starting from my mom's window boxes. Stir with the shitty car, please go away. Get a muffler. Okay, so these are the begonias that I am starting for my mom's window boxes and they are like the tiniest, teensiest little sprouts. <laughs> They're so small. So I'm excited to see some of those. I was a little worried these wouldn't even, these wouldn't even go. So hopefully I started them early enough because I can tell that they're already going to take a long time. So you can see that this um, sugar rush peach, it got like the seed was stuck on the cotyledons for a really long time and it's just not really off to the greatest start. So I'm probably just going to dump that one and then pick one of these to keep in the pot. And then over here, these are more of that little mini basil. I think those seeds probably came from MI Gardener, I think. Um, and then these are orchid mist petunias, which have not done a dang thing. So we'll see how those go. And then this last tray down here, these are the dahlias that you saw me repotting at the beginning of the video. So you can see they're doing quite a bit of growing and they're doing pretty good. I turn them around every day so they don't lean over too hard or anything because they are sort of in this area that doesn't have the light right over it. I had to figure out another thing to do with this light just to not be wasting so much. And then these, let's see if I can get one of these out without crushing everything. These are the licorice mint that I was repotting at the beginning. So you can see they got really big since um, I repotted them a couple weeks ago. No, you've done enough. Say hi, everyone gets mad if you don't make an appearance. <laughs> stop it, stop, stop. All right guys, that's gonna do it for today. I hope you will join me for the next garden vlog as we get everything going. I can't wait till spring. We are not that far out, so hang in there if you are also suffering a little bit in this bleak and cold weather. We will be looking at flowers and bees and butterflies before you know it what I'm telling myself. <laughs> All right, friends, let me know if you have started anything and what's going on in your gardening life down below in the comments. Hit the like if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Bye.